Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. A couple of weeks ago I made a video showing the steps that I went through to make a print from the piece of wood that I found inside a round of free. This week I'm doing a similar thing, except the piece of wood that I'm going to carve came from a wedge of free, and while I turn it into art, I'm going to talk less about each step of the printmaking process and more about thinking creatively about the art mediums that you choose to work in. Before I get into that topic, I'll go through basically what you can see me doing in this video. I'm going to be making a woodcut print from the cheese packaging, and the piece of wood this time was thicker and easier to carve than the small round piece that I used last time. I didn't have to glue any extra layers of cardboard to it because it came with a backing piece already laminated in place, but the same cheese that I bought afterwards didn't have this, so your mileage may vary. After I'd cleaned and dried the wood, I painted a layer of shellac drawing ink all over the surface, and this was to help me seal the wood, and also so that I could see what I was carving away more easily and then I used some opaque white ink to plan out my drawing and what I was going to carve away. I carved with a V-shaped wood carving tool and smoothed the surface with some very fine sandpaper and a stiff paintbrush to clear away any splinters. And after that, I inked up the plate with some block printing ink and printed it on some heavyweight Somerset printmaking paper using my etching press. If you're interested in the materials and tools that you can see me using, you'll find everything listed in the description, and I'll also include links to a few of my other printmaking tutorial videos that show you how to set an etching press for printing relief, how to clean up your stuff, and how you can print by hand if you don't have a press. Now onto the topic at hand. You might have picked up from the huge variety of videos that I've made for this channel, but I'm the kind of person who likes to make art in all sorts of styles and mediums. I'll give pretty much anything a try. I do gravitate towards print-based mediums, but even within printmaking there's a lot of variety between techniques, and a lot of printmakers just stick to one kind of printmaking. Sometimes I do kind of envy people who seem to be able to choose one medium and stick with it forever and ever. I think there's definitely benefits to doing just one thing and getting really, really amazingly good at it, but I also think there's a lot of benefits to moving between different techniques and creative outlets. One of the reasons that I've practiced a lot of different art mediums is that I worked for a long time in an art supply shop in Australia. We mostly sold materials and tools for printmaking, but we also sold a lot of painting and drawing supplies, so I had to learn how to work in those mediums so that I could give people good advice. Even before that though, I liked to switch between mediums fairly regularly. What I think is really great about learning a lot of different techniques is that it really opens up your perspective and forces you to think about everything slightly differently. It gives you the freedom to think about your ideas and what you want to say first, and then to find the medium that lets you communicate those ideas in the most creative way possible. It also means that I can look at unusual materials, like things that are meant for an entirely different purpose, and my default reaction now is to wonder how I can use those random everyday materials in a new way. This way of approaching making art also really helps me think about exactly what I want to say, and to consider how using different art forms will contribute to those ideas. Whether we like it or not, the mediums that we choose to make our art in are never really neutral, and thinking holistically about what your chosen medium brings to the table is useful in a lot of different ways. 
I feel like it can make you think harder about what it is you're saying with your art and choosing your medium with this kind of approach can really help you crystallise your thoughts. It can also give you a solid starting point and help get rid of that feeling of not quite knowing where or how to start a project. One of the things that I really like about printmaking as a medium in general is that there are inbuilt restrictions. You have to move within a framework and it forces you to consider the process a bit more and the actual outcome less. As a maker, thinking about the process as the interesting part of the art and the finished artwork as less important definitely helps me make better art. There was a time at the start of my art degree where I tried really hard to make projects that looked a certain way and I consistently ended up being a bit disappointed. For me, it was a really frustrating way to try and make art. I kind of got to a point where something had to change, so I made a deliberate decision to stop caring about what something looked like at the end. And instead, I set up a bunch of rules and goals to hit during the process of making my work. The effect was pretty much immediate. I felt so much happier and more relaxed, and what I was making was straight away just so much better quality-wise. I think you can apply this approach to whatever kind of art you're making, whether it's drawing or painting or printmaking, sculpture, ceramics, music, video or whatever you enjoy doing. If working in just one medium makes you happy, that's great, but remember that if you get stuck on something, you can just put it aside for a minute and try something else. Think about the materials that you have and how you can use them in different ways. It's kind of cliche, but there's a little bit of the Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance approach in this. Now I've tried reading that book and it wasn't really for me, but I do have this old book of Chris in the Morning quotes from the TV show Northern Exposure, and I watched that show and read that book so much as a teenager. Chris in the Morning loved Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And in the book that I have under the entry for plumbing, there's a quote that just says, have you tried thinking like a shower? That quote stuck with me for a good 30 or so years now, and I constantly think about it when I'm trying to figure out what to do with my art materials or how to take an idea out of my brain and make it into a physical object. This approach works pretty well for me from a couple of different directions. If I have an idea but I don't know what to make to represent that idea, I can list out all my thoughts and see if there are any connections and then try and find a medium that will work well to express those ideas. Alternatively, if I've got a bunch of different materials but no real ideas, I can look at the materials, try using them in a bunch of different ways, or research the properties of my materials, and I'll often come up with cool ideas sparked from just being interested in the thing that's in front of me. That's how the prints that I'm making in this video came about. Because I'm not tied to making only one style of art, or only making things in a very specific way with traditional materials, I often look at the things around my house and I try using those things in different ways. Looking at the packaging for my cheese, I thought it might be possible to carve it like a woodcut print. The way the shape of the wood is laid out in three distinct panels made me think of stained glass and painted triptych pictures, which were often used by artists to tell religious stories. Jumping off from that point, I wanted to illustrate a story about science instead, and I went back to the idea of what the wood was used for in the first place. 
and that's how I ended up carving enlarged illustrations of the microbes that are used to make brie and camembert cheese. All the decisions for this artwork were informed by the history of my materials, and I think that's a really fun and interesting way to work. While I finish up here, it seems like a good time to thank all of you who support me on Patreon. Every little bit of support really does help me keep making these videos better. And if you'd like to join me over there, I've got a bunch of different reward levels, including some where you get an original digital artwork to download and print every month. The original artworks that I'm making here will also be available for sale on my website. And if you'd like to buy a reproduction print, you can find them for sale in my Redbubble shop. All the links will be in the description of this video. That's it. I hope you liked seeing me print these Brie woodcuts and listening to me ramble on about making art. I'd love to hear if you've ever used any unusual materials for making artwork. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. And if you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I've listed all the materials that I used today in the description and you'll also find links there for my website my Patreon, my Facebook page, my Instagram, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.